All right, now that we have this asset uh, reviewed and approved as part of our governance process, we want to go ahead and use that asset. And there's a couple of different ways that you can use assets in Rational Asset Manager. One is using our web client. So we could go ahead and search for the asset using our web client by clicking in and typing in, for example, we want something to do with web, we want something to do with Ajax, because that's a new technology. And the search results would come back. And we can see that, sure enough, the component that we've submitted earlier looks like it's gone through some more iterations and it looks like it was improved and fixed and uh, is now approved so uh, I can actually come in here as Gilly and I can go ahead and look uh, to see for example uh, who reviewed it when it was reviewed so I have full audit history on what what who reviewed it who submitted it um, so it looks like Connie actually reviewed and submitted it I can also look at the content uh, so I can actually look at the jar files for example in this case if it's uh, HTML I can preview the files as well I can look at the ratings so I can figure out for example what are other people in the organization saying are they giving it good comments are they saying you know very useful this gives me a way to see uh, who else is using it and, and of course we have integrations with change management tools so we can see the defects associated with this we can also see any type of uh, discussions that are going on as well if we had a forum here and then we can see again the review history the collaboration history of what policies were run who the reviewers were and what the history was on that and then something new in RAM 7.2 uh, is our ability to do asset reports and we've improved asset reports quite a bit but before I do that, let me just show you uh, other ways I can understand as well this asset. I can actually visualize this asset and how it's related to other assets as well. I'm able to see, for example, this JSF component is being used by the service implementation. And I'm also able to see what are the related assets to this. So I can show other assets, for example, two levels deep. And as I begin to uncover these assets, I'm able to see, understand how they're related, what dependencies they have. I'm able to see even who the owners are, for example, of each of these assets as well. So I can say, show me the owner as well. And this will show me who the owners are of these assets. This allows me more effectively to be able to collaborate with these different teams, but also see how these assets are made up. In this case, there is a document of understanding between the service provider and consumer. There's also a business process that's related to this service as well. So I can see how that's related. And I can see the actual service implementation, what actually is going into that build process. And I can also see, for example, what web application exists as well that consumes or uses that service. So by hovering and looking at each of these assets, I'm able to very quickly understand the landscape of who owns these assets, how they're interrelated. I can also click on these and further see the relationships on top or, or navigate directly to those assets by clicking on them. And then this brings me back to the asset details page. If I wanted to consume this asset at this point, I could just download the asset and I could download it and use it. You notice here I also see what related assets exist so I can download the related assets. This is important as well because if I'm trying to download a solution, perhaps I want to download all the solution assets that are related to that asset as well. Let me just show you a little bit more about how we can see how assets are related. We can do this impact analysis report here. We can do an impact analysis report where we specify the relationships and it automatically will go and get us all the dependent assets and who their owners are as well. If I want to see who's using the asset, I can click on Asset Usage and I can see who's browsing the asset as well as who's downloading the asset and, any, and then I can also send them an email to let them know, for example, there's a new version coming. They could also be notified of that if they subscribe to the asset as well. I can also visualize and see the relationships here on this asset in terms of what open source, for example, is used in this build implementation of this asset. And if I wanted to, I could actually go to each one of these components that this service implementation depends on and analyze and look at those as well. Usage, as I mentioned, happens in different ways. One, for example, is by downloading the asset in the web client. 
by browsing the asset. Usage also happens by viewing it. And so we're able to report on both of those ways. In this case, I can see usage by built. I can also see usage based on browsing. In this graph here, you can see a time line of when this asset was used and wasn't used. As you can see, it looks like it was previously used quite often as part of our build process, but as of late, it hasn't been. This may be a sign that an asset is no longer being used. Again, I can email these people and let them know if I were going to sunset this asset to get their feedback before I sunset. Again, uh, this enables you to collaborate with your asset consumers that are using the asset. In addition to being able to run reports on Rational Asset Manager on individual assets, you're able to understand the activity that's going on in your community by running reports at the community level. This is something new that's in Rational Asset Manager version 7.2. We had repository level statistics, and now we've added those repository level statistics at the individual community level. So now if you're a community administrator or other user, you're able to see what are the top assets that are used in that community, what are the top rated ones. You can actually click on them and see information about those assets. For example, how many assets were approved, how many assets are in review. This is important because this allows you to quantify where there's perhaps bottlenecks in your review process. What types of assets are they? Are there components, open source components, releases, specification? And by clicking on these again, you're able to automatically go to those assets in that community and they get displayed on the search results. You can also run audit reports at the community level. So for example, if you needed to run audit compliance reports for who's downloaded an asset, who's viewed an asset, you're able to specify the date and interval and automatically generate the report for that type of activity for that duration period.